all the executives of BRSI fellows members and participants more specifically to professor pande whose initiative is this is his initiative our president professor sopuri who could not be here because of some personal commitment recommitments and other executive board members uh, welcome all of you uh, today's speaker is uh, professor k k pant director iit rurki uh, he is fellow of brsi and a distinguished academician he need no introduction i i believe that uh, he will speak on the topic green and sustainable processes for conversion of biomass to fuels and chemicals uh, welcome professor pant uh, i i i now hand over uh, dr bhaskar to introduce uh, the today's speaker professor k k pant good afternoon sir uh, thank you very much and uh, it's my privilege to uh, introduce professor uh, kk pant i think audience knows him he is a world renowned professor and he is the director of iit rurki but as it is a customer and it is our uh, pride to proud to uh, introduce him and professor uh, pant has received the phd in chemical engineering from iit kanpur and after the uh, several years of work at iit delhi he moved he has taken over as a director of iit roorkee on october 12 2022 and uh, he was the he had a positions on petrotech chair and federation of indian petroleum industries chair professor and he was the gate chairman and jam uh, joint uh, examination chairman and he head of the department of chemical engineering for several years in addition to that he is also adjunct faculty at the university of saskatchewan in canada and honorary faculty and visiting faculty at uh, universities in australia university of queensland owen university sugi university university of aston university of new south uh, south wales university of utah there are several universities he is a visiting professor there and uh, his research areas as you can see on the uh, title that sustainable process for conversion but in addition to that he is a renowned expert on the co2 capture and conversion hydrogen and waste to energy with the more than 30 years of uh, academic and uh, research experience he has published more than six, 260 publications with uh, more than 15300 citations and he has granted several national and international patents he is acclaimed science professor and a fellow from the several world renowned organizations including the frsc london and a fellow of the several other organizations indian national academy of engineering fellow of the indian desalination association of course biotech research society of india and he has received the several awards which includes the kl chopra applied research award by the indian institute of technology delhi kemcon distinguished professor award hardilla award dr amy aviram rao award and uh, best phd thesis uh, supervised from the gandhi Te young technology innovation award so with this small introduction i take once again a privilege and uh, i welcome professor pant for uh, delivering the talk thank you very much sir. thank you thank you professor bhaskar i think it is too big introduction thank you for explored explore, ordinary right words about me Uh, i am also thankful to professor khare professor pande and all the other distinguished personality of brs brsi who have given me the opportunity to speak in front of all of you the who are very expert in these areas and uh, whatever the presentation right uh, here is only because i have learned it from all of the seniors who are working in the area of biomass conversion so having said that 
once again good afternoon to all the participants those who are listening to this lecture and uh, uh, this uh, i was told that this is the first lecture of the series for this year and uh, that is also i'm grateful to all the organizers who have given me the opportunity so i'll give some glimpse in this talk that how the biomass can be converted to the fuels and chemicals and uh, when we talk about the concept of green right refinery green hydrogen then the role of biomass in terms of sustainability in terms of sustainable energy becomes much more important those who have not visited iit roorkee campus this building is 176 iit roorkee has already completed 176 years and this building is the right the oldest building which you see here this institute is in total called right the first in asia the oldest engineering college and second in the world so that that's what the right its own heritage value it was it given iit roorkee in 2001 the status of earlier it was university of roorkee but we changed to iit roorkee in 2001 and this is our main administrative building most of the administrative activities are done in this building and rest of the activities are in the separate part of the building so this has lot of greenery and i welcome all of you if you visit our campus do let me know the when we talk about the biomass conversion utilization there are several right challenges and uh, why are we going moving towards right these kind of feed stocks instead of the kind of right bio uh, fuels which are here instead of fossil derived feed stock why are we working so this is just the a glimpse that how the status of carbon dioxide is increasing all of you know that temperature is increasing by 1.5 degree everybody is talking about sustainability and we also right uh, our honorable prime minister has given right a kind of directives that net zero should be achieved by 2070 there are several issues if you look at the carbon dioxide concentration in the environment is increasing and presently it is around 418 ppm this is also a issue of concern and that is where everybody all of us have to work together and we are all i think in total we are working uh, when we look at the how this can be taken and that will be the need of the hour so you see that the sustainable energy on the left hand side when we talk and the renewable energy the meaning of the renewable energy a renewable energy cannot be sustainable so we have to find out the sustainable so sustainability is something which is related to the societal importance so we need to understand that how our offsprings are using right whatever the resources which are being utilized and how can it be made right if you are developing some sources of energy some resource of water right and at the same time the nutritious food that should be supplied right continuously without disturbing the ecological system that is the meaning and i think as a biotechnologist it becomes our responsibility as a engineer or scientist researchers it becomes our responsibility that we should look right how we can maintain our society sustainable through our knowledge of science and engineering and how in total we can work together so this is what the target which has been given right one third of the carbon dioxide is to be reduced by 2030 and by 2070 this is to be reduced to zero it means the fossil derived food stocks are to be replaced to by some other kind of food stock bio right when we talk every all of you know this thing so biomass is basically a composition where you talk about carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen right and basically we define when you look at in terms of their right cellulosic hemicellulosic lignin and there may be several some component which are extract extracted and can be utilized but when you look at their structures right if you we need to if you talk it as a green right a source of energy if you talk as a the concept of bio refinery we need to understand these structures and if you understand these structures and look at the each individual component then i feel that there are plenty of opportunities so people are now they looking forward how lignin can be converted right like these phenolics right non linear polymers hydrophobic right which can be used for different application and that is i think very complex molecule can be converted into value added product and scale up is required here same thing on the left hand side if you see c5 c6 sugars right and these can be converted into again value added product so i'll just give some brief glimpse of this other side also people are talking now this right uh, wetland area and production of the algae biomass the algae biomass has some advantage if you look at the life cycle assessment and that's why the uh, crdt and uh, right iit delhi and our team are working on this production of algae and then the camping we are working on how these algae biomass can be converted into different kind of value added product so one thing is the hydrolysis hydrothermal 
conversion and then you can separate them into the so you can have the biodiesel a kind of algae which is totally a green biodiesel because the life cycle of this algae the production can be increased within 24 hours and lot of biotechnological work which have already been done in this area and then you can have the different product which you can see right and these are the projects which can be extracted from the algae biomass and that is where the right uh, wetland area the treatment and this is the work right lot of work is being done in different groups also so there is a potential to develop sustainable technologies when we talk about biomass and uh, today in this talk i will just cover only the platform chemicals not the right the fermentation route so platform chemicals through the thermochemical or thermocatalytic reaction which is the concept when you look at in total right so a combination of fermentation along with right where the several enzymes are used in the fermentation along with the catalyst which can be developed for the right larger production so that is where the concept of biorefinery we are looking and that is the I think the total when you see the combination of these two, so it may be fermentation for alcohol production and then further conversion or maybe the several component of the biomass when you are hydrolyzed, partly it can be taken towards the fermentation route and partly it can be towards the, uh, the thermochemical route for con converting into value added product. So series of the products can be obtained which can be pharmaceutical application which can be used as a source of energy. And that is where the, and sometimes it can be used as a fertilizer and also food product also. And several, right, uh, when you look at the hydroxy appetite, right, magnesium hydroxy appetite, calcium hydroxy appetite, which can be used for denture purpose as well as for the bones. And that is where these kind of algae, when you do the hydrothermal liquefaction of algae and then react it, right, under fast pyrolysis you can have those kind of product also. And that is also where these, because they are, these algae are rich in protein and these can be used for the conversion into the several food products. So it is a substitute for the non-veg, right? When you talk about vegan product and that is also being done by several research groups. So I'm not talking, as I said, this pyrolysis, liquefaction, gasification. This is one of the ways where we are working. Right, and uh, you can pyrolyze the biomass, right? You can liquefy the biomass. This biomass, when I'm saying, even MSW itself has the more than 45% of this, right? That can be biodegradable. And you can convert it into refuse derived fuel, and that refuse derived fuel can be converted right to different products, even hydrogen also, right? So I'll cover a little bit of that also. And uh, the most of the time, when you talk about pyrolysis, liquefaction, gasification, these are the kind of fuels which can be produced. So this is a now a lot of groups like NTPC and BHL because the government has mandate made a mandate that 20% of these kind of green fuels should be added with the fossil dry food stock. So coal can be mixed right with this kind of bio coal also or biomass pellet. And that is also, I think, Professor Talada and his group also working. And a lot of other groups are working on those areas also. So biomass can be blended with other kind of fossil dry fuel stock under different capacities. Same thing here, the heat and power, right? So different applications of cellulogic, hemicellulogic and lignin, which can be hydrolyzed and can be converted to what you see the xylitol, jorbitol, hydroxymethyl perforol, and these are the low calorie sugars, which can be produced from the biomass material. And that is, I think, instead of converting biomass to pyrolysis or this, it is more, much more valuable, provided the scale up, right? Because I always tell this, should be checked through whatever the research and development TRL level 9. And finally, we talk market readiness level and Please. then community acceptable, acceptable level. So it means the economy analysis is also very important when you look at, right? So STEM along with economy analysis, that has become very important nowadays if you want to really use these kind of resources for energy. So this is what right, our group have worked in different area. So you see on the right hand side, right? The, uh, this circle, the outer circle and the inner circle. The outer circle is something which I was, a lot of studies have been done. The biomass to bio coal, biomass to biochar, right? And several, right, uh, product biomass for power center. This is called high temperature process. So this is the outer circle where the temperature more than 500, 600 or even 800 degrees centigrade are required depending upon the, right, uh, the product which is required. But I am talking here the inner circle. Inner circle where you need to understand more chemistry. The outer circle does not require much chemistry because this is totally a breakage of the bond converted into right at different condition, temperature, pressure, and catalyst and get the liquid fuel or carbon or the gas, right? But inner circle required because this is where we are avoiding the undesired byproduct 
and looking for the desired product. And the all what you see, the right when you see these kind of products in the inner circle are cellulose, heavy cellulose, or lignin. So, so all these right C5, C6 sugars can be converted to different series of the product. So, some glimpse of I will just give during my presentation. So, this is more important if you are able to work for this. This has the application in pharmaceutical industry, this has the application in several food industry. And these can have the application in biorefinery, that is the lubricants, food additives. So everything can be done if you are able to understand the chemistry for this. And biomass, you know, India has around 800 right, million ton of biomass, right? These kind of residue, agricultural residue, it comes every year. And these can be effectively utilized, provided the collection and right, all these kind of processes uh, right, can be developed. Harvesting, which is very important, the issues which are related to stable burning that can be resolved if you just work right for these kind of products. So this is what the traditional right. Uh, I thought that I'll just give you some picture on this that how this biomass right can be converted. The lignocellulosic biomass can be converted, and these are the different research topics which are so all these kind of ways. Now you can have biomass plus plastic also, right? You need to do a different kind of research and. Uh, Professor Talada and uh, right, my one of the students is working on that, and that is where you have to write give some kind of pretreatment. It can be plasma based treatment, microwave assisted. Also, people are doing a lot of work on those areas also, and biochemical processing where now higher alcohol, butanol, it right, propanol, all those kind of alcohols which can be made through biochemical. And Professor Pandey, Professor Kare, and they are and several other biotechnologists are working in the area, right? So, but. Uh, the second part which we are doing or we are discussing is something where a hydrothermal processing. So hydrothermal is something where you have to use right water. Biomass already have the 80% water, say algae. It is very high in water and you need not to dry it and give some kind of right to what we call flash pyrolysis or right flash hydrolysis where only one to two seconds short period of time you have to process. The purpose is that the protein should not degrade if you are especially for the algae biomass. But for rest of the biomass, you can keep higher temperature and uh, till you get the product. And that is where you need to optimize because the advantage of this process compared to the rest of the processes is that the conversion and yield are higher. So you have different streams and you can have the distillation and you can have series of the products like what you see here from these processes. And that is where, right, uh, the most of the time, this is the, right, either this biochemical or thermochemical where I talked about pyrolysis, but this is nowadays, right, uh, is more common. And here you can have the plenty of the product in the aqua system like phenols, perchirols, right, and several other, and these can be, right, uh, sometimes you have wet, wet oxidation, so you can have lactic acid and you polymerize it. You can have the biopolymer polylactic acid also. So these are the new trends where I think scale up is required because the several companies like Uniflex and uh, right and several other company Reliance they are working uh, on these areas to produce this biodegradable polymer. So again, right, uh, this is where you if you see that right the fermentation route versus hydrolysis route. So levonic acid, right, that is again. A different catalyst is required for this, and you can have alkyl levonate. So these products are generally used for the additive purpose, fuel additive. And these are green additive, means like uh, when you talk about cetane number, octane number, when you talk about the lubricity, when you talk about their right antioxidant. So these right products can have that kind of fuel additives, and that improves the life of the engine, that improves the efficiency of the combustion, and that is these are the green and can be used, and these are. Right, where you talk about green gasoline, so this is similar to green gasoline. So this can be blended with the gasoline and directly to use. So that these are the products which you see, right? The earlier it were MTB and all these things, but now this, this is not the research work which is good. Another products are where the people talk, right? Gamma valor, valor lockdown, resins, plastic, plastic, all these products can also be made from this kind of biomass material using the low temperature conversion. This is a part of our CRG project. Uh, where we are working on this, right, uh, artificial sweeteners, right? Uh, you know that stevia is one, right, kind of biomass material which can have the extract and that extract can be used for the right low calorie sugar. Here we are talking in terms of that, how this cellulose and hemicellulose or mainly the C5 sugars, right, uh, can be converted into xylitol, jorbitol. So these are, you see that this is the product, right, jorbitol, which has a huge demand because xylitol and jorbitol, these, these are, considered as a low calorie sugar. These are basically C5 sugars, right? And compared to glucose and fructose, right? These are 
much more desirable now when you look at from the health health point of view so this is a one of the right uh, uh, the advantage of the biomass that if it is rich in hemicellulose or c5 sugars or if you are able to get the uh, extracted by hydrolysis these two c5 sugars can be converted into xylitol and jorbitol and catalysis plays a very important role so this is where the market you see 265 million metric ton when you talk about and business is 1 billion dollars of the business from these products so these have been identified as one of the top 12 sugar based building block right and these can be derived from these kind of biomass material and especially the hemicellulose material so we do work on those kind of right products so for that you see that when you look at a platform chemical like this is hmf hydroxymethyl perfluorol and just you have to understand the chemistry if you look at here on this biomass right and catalyst so you can have some right in the alcoholysis you can have the ethanolysis also so that is a kind of hydrolysis approach it can be done under microwave it can be under high temperature or some kind of solar energy can also be used because input energy versus output energy how much green process is being used that is very important and challenging mnre has given the guidelines also for this that when you call a particular process green so how much carbon dioxide equivalent energy is being conge consumed during the process is also very important so one needs to work accordingly and you see fuel fuel additives solvents polymers chemicals resins and fragrance which can come out from these kind of platform chemicals like hmf emf then ethyl aluminate so these becomes a platform chemicals right emf dmf hmf all these becomes a primary and these can be used once you have this because the rest of the technologies are already well known like what you say right the different solvents gamma well electron plasticizers diphenyl like ester so these this is the building block for developing other product and advantage of this ethyl aluminate as i said that this is a fuel additive also so it has lower it lowers the pore point it reduces the pollutant it reduces the socks and nox during combustion it reduces the hydrocarbon emissions it reduces the cold filter plugging point so this is a, one of the greenest right uh, fuel and which is coming from the biomass based feed stock same thing with the emf also you see that they have the different applications for different purpose and they can be used as a green solvent they can be used as a green chemical so right so when you look at the xylitol right uh, so again there are a lot of right chemistry which is required because the application of xylitol it works as a nutraceuticals pharmaceutical cosmetic thickeners emulsifier laxative coating mouthwash so for every purpose and this can also be converted into several other product like propylene glycol xylitic acid lactic acid gilsol and ethylene glycol and this can be produced right uh, so this is a uh, work which has been done right by our team at iit delhi and this is where we work right on different kind of platform chemicals from the bio based chemicals bio based platform molecules so when you talk about right xylose right c5 sugars these are very complex molecules so in order to crack these molecules or in order to transform the different reaction which are required it may be oxidation it may be reduction it may be hydrolysis it may be hydrogenolysis and generally these requires right temperature around 50 150 degrees centigrade and pressure around more than right uh, 50 bar and that is the condition things to be optimized so these all kind of biomass right so we worked mainly with the bagasse right and bamboo right uh, because they these are good in cellulose and hemicellulose and uh, one can go with any type of biomass and then you you have to hydrogenate it in the presence of catalyst so low activity of xylose and glucose because of their anomic forms what you see here right anomer alpha anomer beta anomer so because of this right and what you see glucose right so that is where you need to look at that how the catalysis can help here and uh, people are doing right nanoparticles right the cluster based nanoparticles so these kind of metals right on uh, some support single atom catalysts are also working on in this area right this this is a single atom although the stability of single atom they, there are a couple of challenges with these uh, but at a low temperature they are functional and they can work together so that is the new trends when you talk about bulk catalyst have changed to single atom catalyst and this is the research which is being done because everybody is talking about the efficiency of the process 
minimum utilization of the costly materials when you talk about catalyst materials like pgm group metals are very costly so if the small concentration of these can be helpful so these can be deposited on some support like either sub nano nano or a single atom so atom by atom importance is very important and for that you know that uh, the challenges are also there because the, when these metals become single atoms they are highly unstable and they try to make the clusters of the metal so always there is a possibility that single atom will convert to sub nano nano or bulk so that is the challenge when you look at the catalyst development and lot of work is required to be done further in these areas so aerosol based catalyst right they have very high surface free energy and these can be used for the utilization of the biomass especially c5 and c6 sugar so another important challenge already right you know alcohol or sulfuric acid sodium hydroxide these kind of because separation of lignin cellulose because if you separate that instead of using the entire biomass right if you use the separate components then the input versus output uh, the product composition would be better so that is also point right to which, where the people are working can be used directly the entire biomass or what is the advantage if you just separate these kind of component and treat cellulose separately hemicellulose separately and lignin separately cellulose hemicellulose sometimes right together also you can process but lignin is little bit much more complex so the treatment of lignin is done in a different so several methods like ionic liquids have come up in picture right uh, for these kind of pre treatment so that is where when you see that how the pre treatment can be made effective so we need to think in all these directions and that is when you talk about sustainability concept so everything is important you need to have the some kind of enzyme hydrolysis or some type type of interpretation of solvent right or several other product where it can be helpful so this is where the right all of you know about this so i'm not going in detail further and same thing here platform chemicals also right so i was talking about different platform chemicals so when you look at the complex structure of lignin hemicellulose or cellulose these can be converted to right say hydrogenation hydrogenolysis oxidation and you can break these bonds right and uh, just by you have to control the temperature time and the other right solvent to right uh, the solid ratio and then you can have the series of these product so uh, so every step right now the artificial intelligent machine learning tools because the data are available and how these data can be helpful for selective production of these kind of right products that is also i think the young generation should address that point and then lot of research is required in terms of the where the physics chemistry and the engineering right uh, the bioscience can be join right uh, work they can work together in order to right understand the chemistry and then look at the engineering of the process where the process can be optimized with minimum of the human production so that is the right the dehydration hydrogenation you have the furfural 5 hmf alcohols linoleic acid all these and hydrogenation will give you xorbitol and xylitol so so these are the different so when you have a reaction all those kind of reactions are happening during the process so you can't say that only one reaction is happening and that's why your mixture will have a series of the hydrocarbon mixture and separation of these component is again a challenge so cost wise if you look at so you we need to work that how the product can be selective how minimum number of unit operations can be used after the chemical process otherwise the cost will not be right the uh, cost will not be effective in terms of the product formation so just uh, this picture is giving that uh, because here i have said that hydrogenation hydrogenolysis oxidation dehydration so some parts are being done by the metal some part catalyst metal catalyst like platinum rubidium right cobalt nickel and some parts are being done by the support part so so it means it is a combination of support may have a bronsted and lewis so this picture which is shown here right so everything whether you have a cellulose hemicellulose lignin or lipids all the oils right bio oil these can be converted and this dots which have been shown here red green and black so red is representing bronsted acid side black is representing the metals like platinum and rubidium and green is representing the lewis acid side so idea is that when you look at any product if you want to convert hemicellulose to furfural alcohol you have to look at the combination like this so it is the major component which is a bronsted acidity and then it is a component which has the lewis acidity mild lewis acidity and then this is the part when you convert alcohol for fraud to for fraud alcohol you need to convert some metal component so this is where people look at or researchers are looking at one pot conversion that is minimum unit operation 
can we have the hemicellulose to ferprol alcohol or can we it be converted to ferprol accordingly the catalyst will play a lead role same thing for cellulose also and several other products and this is the key that how right the different kind of catalyst can be selected for a product formation so all these products have the right whether you see on the bottom side middle side or at the second row every metal intermediates have some value and they have the application accordingly for the different areas so uh, we did some work so like ionic liquids are coming out deep eutectic solvents have, are also coming up heteropoly acid because this requires a high acidity so super acids heteropoly acids or some kind of kagan structures what we call right sulfonated catalyst so all these catalysts have been tested by different groups different researchers then similarly metal salts zeolites graphene oxides amylase catalysts so they all also have been studied by different groups the important thing is that the catalyst activity is related not only to acidity but also the type that is the bronsted lewis or the kind of textural properties of the catalyst so pore volume pore size surface area of the catalyst all these things are also very important in the catalytic activity so these are couple of results i am not going in detail the idea is to show that how the effective right that different condition microwave versus non microwave right or the from cellulose or hemicellulose or from intermediates you can do the reactions and then test and finally make the overall one pot conversion so ultimate aim is there but people do r and d right by using taking the intermediate so like this hmm you have the alcohol so it is an alcoholysis and some kind of metal salts used and you can have the ethyl linoleic and this is generally right uh, temperature requirement is not very high if you look at from this side right and this is a batch process which have been done and linoleic acid for frol alcohol hmf fructose so these different reactants can be used and accordingly you have the ethyl linoleic you right so that is right which is directly in uh, the gasoline product similar to the so so those metal salt based catalysts right the, that they have a lot of role in terms of the effective per percentage so this you see that catalyst concentration and uh, different kind of yields with respect to because ethanol is also used as a solvent one can have the water also so alcoholysis has given the better results and that's why these kind of results have been shown here and details are available on this paper so everybody is looking forward that how alcohol can be produced from the biomass in one pot right and for that the catalytic activity plays a lead role and this is what you see these are the kagan structures right which are very effective when you talk right tungsten is at the center and then silicon this all this right uh, different uh, sorry silicon is at the center and then this can be silicon it can be phosphorus right and then tungsten molybdenum all these right can be as a catalytic component which are on the ring side so this is the different metal type right catalyst can be developed here because if you look at the series right periodic tables the chromium tungsten zirconium molybdenum all these can be used and these are right the kind of hydrogen bonding that is effective and tuned effective bonding right which has the acid base interaction it has tungsten and zirconia bo covalent bonding and they play a lead role and this is called a kagan silico tungsten acid a kagan structure which provides the more and more heteropoly acid so this is a kind of heteropoly acid hpa which is used for the catalytic activity and the synthesis is not very complicated so this is simple method for synthesis but the conversion and selectivity are much better with this type of catalyst so so xylose right glucose c5 c6 sugars right and with the presence of rhodium right uh, also that is another active metal and kind of single atom catalyst can be developed uh, for this right and these kind of right again another kagan structure which you see here and that can give you the effectively the xylitol so or xorbitol so very low humins can be produced with more than 90% selectivity towards xylitol and xorbitol can be obtained under a short period of time like 4 minutes or 5 minutes under this microwave assisted synthesis so why rhodium right what kind of catalyst synthesis you are doing that is a very important i am not going in detail but the uh, these kind of metals right are much more effective but low concentration of these metals are required right because otherwise the cost will be a big challenge so 0.5% 0.1 0.2% of these kind of metals and that's why i was talking the nanoparticles sub nanoparticles or single atom catalyst which can be used for the process and this is where right the how the catalyst different kind of metals right can be used some microporous or mesoporous templates can be used 
for catalyst synthesis. Different ligands can be used like catechol, right, triphenyl phosphines, PPH, triphenyl amines, AM. So these different catalysts have been prepared and tested for the conversion of this biomass into the right different products like ethylonate, levonic acid, and hydroxymethyl for prop. So this is where the structure of the catalyst. So this is, you see the ruthenium based catalyst. And similarly, you can replace ruthenium by other metals also. And uh, the mesoporous structure, generally, again, the kinetic diameter of this right biomass molecule versus the pore diameter of this molecule. So diffusion is a big challenge, actually, in these kind of reactions. So mass transfer resistance is if increased, your conversion selectivity will be affected. So that's why this kinetic diameter, and this can be understood through DFT calculation also, that why these metals compositions are good, right? And what kind of mesoporous structures would be good. And already data are available, so one can use the artificial intelligence knowledge, machine learning knowledge, and then find out a better metal support compositions also, which can further improve the selectivity for the process. So these are right, you see, the different methods of characterization and C5 sugars. And this is how, right, I was talking the mass transfer and diffusion resistances becomes very important. So this is a right a ruthenium single atoms, which are dispersed on side the right uh, core of a right a kind of nano reactor. So they kind of nano balloon and deactivation is much more less in this kind of catalyst. Otherwise, human formation is a big challenge. When you talk about xylitol formation, there are several other product forms which are considered as a human. And that's what the suppression, it becomes a big issue. So, so convergence of these kind of through right uh, biomass, like this is corn cob, right, corn hub, corn cob, all these can be used, right? And they can be hydrolyzed. You have a xylose and xylose oligomer, then hydrogenated, and you have the xylitol. So this is the work, right, which is uh, done under this CRG project. And that is where the catalytically you can hydrogenate xylon to xylitol, right? And you see the convergence selectivity with these selected catalysts. Right. And uh, so you can reach with this ridonium based catalyst, right? Uh, the selectivity is almost right. Uh, but you see, conversion, when you talk about it, reached to a level of more than 90%, right? But conversion and selectivity altogether becomes much more important. So, with different products, what you see here, right? Formic acid is higher here, right? In terms of the selectivity, right? Uh, these selectivities are very low compared to the right, uh, other product. That this here, the selectivity reached to a value of around 50%. Right. So I think we need to trade off high productivity and high purity. So purity versus productivity is to be trade off for the right uh, production of the uh, pure products when you look at the productivity of the Jailan based product. So this is where the right the synthesis of the bronosted acid sites, right, or loose type acidity for the different catalysts and uh, alcohol versus water one can do. So this is where right uh, the catalyst, right, when you talk about and uh, this is where we have used silicon and some right uh, ammonia. Uh, this uh, all these ionic liquids can also be used here in this form, right? And these are also acting as a good catalyst. Uh, then deep eutectic solvents are also being tested, and these are also working as a good test. And their recovery is also better in this case. Catalyst can be very easily recovered. So how these metals can be deposited, right? How the catalyst can be synthesized? That is also a very important art, right? Uh, and uh, that is also one needs to look at that high surface area then how the single atom metals are deposited on the surface and how these will be affecting the overall catalyst selectivity finally. So these are a kind of organo catalysts, right? And this we call nano balloons or nano reactor. And uh, one can characterize by different techniques. Time same are very common, but heart analysis, right? Those analysis are also required when you look at the activity for the single atom catalyst, right? So that is where also, right, uh, R&D is required to be done and uh, the, the results are, right, to be compared accordingly. The only challenge when you talk about single atom, the cost and stability is a big challenge. The another work uh, is algae refinery, algae bio refinery, right? So these are the work, right, uh, which we did, right, with CRDT and a uh, lot of scientists, Professor Anushu Malik and our team worked on this. So this is where the first thing is that using this carbon dioxide, right, uh, which is already available and, right, a kind of, right, uh, this, uh, the, uh, the kind of fermentation of bioreactors, right, so we cultivated this using the solar films and all these. So different approaches were used here. This, this is a kind of biotechnology. I'm not going detail in this, but coral and all these type of, right, uh, which were used for the production of algae. And especially these were used from the wetland areas, right? And uh, near the Barapulla and all these, we collected the samples and then, right, these algae were cultivated. And then I'm talking more on this, that how algae biomass, right? You can have anaerobic digestion and you can have hydrothermal liquefaction. So in this work, I'm talking more on the 
hydrothermal liquefaction of algae. So when you talk about right any biomass, you can decompose it. So one thing is that you dry the algae biomass, but better is that if you look at hydrothermal, right? Uh, so instead of going on this anaerobic digestions, fermentation, I'm talking here, not the pyrolysis or combustion, but this side, right hand side. So you see the wet algae biomass, use the catalyst, which can be simple, right? Geolites or some kind of magnesium carbonate can also dolomite and do the hydrothermal liquefaction and you will have the bio oils, which is much better than these kind of products, right? Bio oils and aqueous phase where you can extract a lot of quinolic compounds are here and biochar, which can be used directly as a fertilizer or it is now can be used as a battery application, hard carbon. You can have the slight treatment of this or it can be used right for CO2 to capture. So we worked on this aerogel synthesis from this kind of right char also. So that is where the wet algae biomass need not to dry and directly do the hydrothermal uh, synthesis. And uh, then you can have the advantage in terms of, and that's what the Reliance was also trying that uh, right the uh, concept of algae biorefinery. And there are right with different catalysts, you can have series of the right when you use the source medium, different nutrients, wastewater. So that is right uh, the work which is done by uh, right uh, CRDT team and uh, the different kind of products, right? Bio code is through hydrothermal. <laughs> so that were, were obtained. So that is where right the oxygen content, nitrogen content, all these things are very important. But uh, instead of going the bio crude, if we can extract the value added products, right, that is much more valuable from this bio algae bio refinery. And that was also the part which was done by our team. So this is where the hydro upgradation to deoxygenate, denitrogenate the bio crude, and then you can have the plenty of application of the product which is obtained from the hydrothermal liquid. So these are a couple of products, right? You see, you have the all the alkanes, alkynes, right? All the aldehydes, ketones, alcohols, carboxylic acid, and then you can identify, right? Their commercial value and then focus on those products. And that is, I think, need of the hour when you talk about that, how the effect of these kind of, right? Catalyst, carbon dioxide treatment, methanol treatment on the product distribution. So these are the series of the product, like see aromatic, significant amount of aromatic can be, could be produced. Lot of amines, right? Uh, could be produced, a lot of esters could be produced, and they have a lot of commercial value and need to work for more in this direction for hydrothermal liquefaction of algae biomass. So this is where, right, uh, they have a lot of advantage in terms of carbon dioxide capture also when you talk about sustainable, right, uh, uh, approach. So this is where the right lot of life cycle assessment that is also work done by the team of CRDT, and we have different kind of products which were obtained from this reaction. And this is where the, right, I was talking the future, right? So people are doing a lot of work on this biomass to hydrogen. So municipal solid waste and the refuse derived fuels, these can be converted. This is a biomass, coal plus biomass. So with Thermax team, we have done coal gasification and then coal to methanol plant. And that's why this is now extension of this, that uh, biomass can be converted to hydrogen. So gasification is very crucial stuff. So they kind of fluidized by gasifier system already set up in Thermax. And uh, we are also working on carbon dioxide capture and conversion, so CO2 to methanol and dimethyl ether with the support of Department of Science and Technology. So this is the team of, uh, when I was there at IIT Delhi, and now we are extending, our team is extending, and we are also, I am also a part of there in CO2 conversion now. But this is already, we are doing, we have initiated this step for biomass to hydrogen. So that is also, a, I think, a lot of importance. So approximately 15 kg of this, Biomass can give you 1 kg hydrogen if the process is properly managed, right? So that is very important that what is the cost of this hydrogen. So roughly this cost comes out around 120, between 120 and 150. So it means your biomass, one thing is to pyrolyze and reform it, you can have hydrogen. And second thing is that you biomass and you can convert it thermochemically. And this is where we are working. The tar cleanup, you can reform it again. You have the scrubber. And finally, this is where the hydrogen which can be compressed and stored. And this is carbon dioxide can be captured and again used it for different purpose. So that is also a part of it. So this is, I think, the lot of work is required to be done in these areas. So people are doing thermochemical, solar assisted, and the plasma based also. So this is, you see that all kind of biomass, bio waste, RDF fuels, right? And these are typical mass balance, right? Uh, and uh, different kind of waste which can be used. And you can have right for purpose of composting. People are doing that also. This is a kind of segregation. So you can have recyclable, right? And this is 
where you can do the plasma pyrolysis and then you can have right uh, the liquid you can have a gas and you can convert it into hydrogen also so all these things similar to what the previous slide i have shown the right you can have the liquid fuel you can have the gas or you can use it for power generation or reform it for hydrogen production and whatever the solid carbon comes it can be used right uh, as a landfill also material and that is the soil fertilizer also which can be used so nothing is going to the waste and this is the concept of circular economy that whatever the product you are getting by product you are getting that should be utilized effectively and these plasma based or thermochemical approaches can be used for effective production so this is where the economy is very important and uh, everybody looking in terms of the right the factors like temperature stream to biomass challenges right like excess energy energy efficiency so the design will be depending on this how much energy input and how much energy output what is the cost of collection and segregation of these kind of biomass and then what kind of reactors you are using and finally which approach pyrolysis gasification jobs and enhanced approach also chemical looping combustion com right combustion steam reforming all these can be used one has to find out out of these processes which one is the best and then look at so these are a couple of right this is still costly water splitting people are doing a lot of work but still it is costly in terms of the overall here you see that 15 kg to 1 kg and 120 to 160 rupees per kg of hydrogen from biomass right this is acceptable and this is the coal you see 120 but this is lot of carbon dioxide issue so that is right it is not a green but this much is the, this one is the green or something where you can call turquoise hydrogen so color is very right people are talking so green hydrogen if not possible at least turquoise hydrogen right where you have captured the carbon right from the source or you have utilized the carbon dioxide effectively and that is the need of the hour this is also another important that you have the biomass you can use it for power generation so this is right hydrolysis and oxidation of different kind of biomass and you can work it so we are looking forward at uh, lab scale we are working on this now and then production via reducive right catalyst so different catalysts can be used and then you can use it directly for the fuel cell although that integration is little bit difficult but a lot of work is required to be done with dhcl as a partner we are looking forward for this work where hydrogen can directly be used so again here the electrode materials the electrolyte these are the big challenge oxygen evolution rate is to be reduced hydrogen evolution rate is to be increased and that is where the different kind of pm right or hydrogen based fuel cells are worked so this is where the oxidative catalyst right and uh, one needs to work that different kind of biomass can be used here this is based on wheat straw it is mentioned hydrogen is required for hydrogenation so how much hydrogen will be consumed during this and that is right and then how much you are utilizing in the process so that is the output of the hydrogen in total would be very very important although in the process hydrogen consumption is very low so but one needs to optimize because we need to look at the contribution of water gas shift reaction and co2 hydrogenation so those are the challenges in, at intermediate level when you talk about these reactions right and uh, and several right uh, r&ds are to be done but this can be done if properly the team is working together and R&D can be brought together. So the processes are developed. The important thing what we talk TRL levels nowadays, right? And TRL level to market readiness level, as I said, and community readiness level, that is the sustainability, right? So if you look at the biomass to bioliquid, right? Pyrolysis, biochar, already a lot of things have been done in that, right? And uh, already, right, demonstrable plants are also there and uh, right, five, six, seven, and already a lot, lot of, right, now commercialization is right required and some plants are coming up right from biomass to bioliquid so one ton to five tons and five ton to 25 ton because collection and segregation of biomass at the local area so i would prefer a kind of uh, what you call mobile type pyrolyzers right if you are using pyrolysis same thing for plastic also and biomass plus plastic combination which i was talking and all these things are already now under the large trl level nines right and these are being done by different research groups but the future is much more complicated when you look at the catalyst conversion, utilization, right? And uh, how the science can be taken together. So design of catalyst, when you talk about platform chemicals, right? In terms of the selectivity, activity, because the, when you talk about catalyst, the conversion, selectivity, activity, and then the activity, I mean to say, for how much time it can be recycled again and again, right? So the carbon neutrality will depend most of the time that how good is the catalyst? and how much right the process can be done at lower temperature 
and how much product right can be obtained without separate sum that, that's what the unit operations can be minimized and one pot definitely better can it be utilized through solar energy right and this is where the a lot of things are to be done and where the machine learning and artificial intelligence big data analysis is required so artificial intelligence machine learning are playing a big role in terms of carbon neutrality biomass conversion catalyst property high throughput of dft calculation molecular lot of groups are working on this and characterization tools are very very important and i think this is what the need of our and this is for all the young researchers those who are working for phd or postdoc they need to think in those direction that how biomass can be effectively utilized for the platform chemical and green chemicals so the, i just uh, stop here with the just summary that all these because we cannot get rid of coal we cannot get rid of right this kind of msw and these are there is a need to work for this right so all this 45% msw which has the biodegradable component along with coal right because india has plenty of coal 240 billion ton and still i think uh, we can go right by 2070 but still right the component of fossil fuel stock will be there in market only thing that we have to reduce the percentage of this fossil right but more important is that the circular economy says that minimize the waste so how the waste which is already available in the form of landfills can be utilized right how the fuel gases can be utilized how the carbon dioxide can be captured and converted and how the biogas can be utilized right the kitchen waste can be converted to biogas then you can have separate methane from this and then crack it and you have again methane can be converted to hydrogen and carbon right so those are the techniques right which need to look at high temperature versus low temperature so lot of things are to be understood which one is the best right and economy analysis and the sustainability concept is to be understood and then you have this the concept of the green refinery so these are couple of right uh, key leaders who have worked uh, now the right uh, they are faculty and uh, is in industry and they are working and several other right uh, dr fara dr sirin then he is currently still working on this crj project right so thank you very much for giving me the opportunity i really am grateful to all of you those who have given me the opportunity and thank you for the patience listening namaskar jai hind uh, thank you so much professor pant i am sure let's have a big clap so, uh, from my side and others uh, it was very insightful lecture and uh, we all felt very you know excited to listen it and there was lot of information for all of us how biomass can be converted into various uh, value add products platform product uh, chemicals and other uh, things to take uh, the, the the using these technology in a greener way for upcoming uh, coming years so i think uh, if there is any question we, we i think on behalf of everyone to professor pant if there is any question we can take it up uh hello uh, professor pan uh, good afternoon professor khare professor pande uh, sorry i mean uh, i i could listen but you know maybe there was some cut because i'm traveling right now yeah. but i think it's, it's very encouraging talk and very comprehensive talk and uh, i have just one small query from professor pan uh, this is rp singh <laughs> yeah, no uh, please let you know like, uh, hello no sir uh the, the actually the work of uh, low temperature catalytic conversion of the mass very very promising at a time to ask you know that is the there may be some new chemicals or maybe hydrogen uh, and you that out of it get some hydrogen is it possible to the bio i i, so, I think your voice is breaking things out yeah actually sir i'm mean, right now i'm traveling but let me question, try to repeat okay, you can type yeah. sir you can type in the, the chat question i think if i understood you are asking that uh, uh, fine maybe because uh, fine sorry actually sir <laughs> i am using my mobile to listen the talk that's why there was some cuts you know, but no, any how i'll just you know kind of sometime no, i'll interact better. with you and I'll, i'll ask my question later on thank you so much sir thank you since now it is better now we can hear you please continue okay okay sir the question is that uh, you know like uh, the catalytic conversion at low temperature to the biomass to the different chemicals is very promising and uh, you know you said that out of 15 kg of the biomass we can get 1 kg of the hydrogen so my simple question is that you know is it possible that we can because i am sure that uh, probably the biomass could be reutilized for recovering more of the hydrogen so is it possible we can recycle the biomass and uh, can get you know kind of more of the hydrogen or more of the value chemicals 
Yeah, yeah, this is very much possible, and MNRA yeah. is already supporting these activities because for okay. this, the only thing that when we talk about these kind of right uh, low temperature versus high temperature, say pyrolysis versus gasification. So one thing is that you have biomass pyrolysis and then reform it for hydrogen. Second thing is biomass okay. gasification and then convert it into by reforming to hydrogen. The only thing that okay. when you do the gasification, you need to have a large scale. Like I am talking of 500 ton, 1500 ton per day of that process. So yeah. it means for that you need to have a large amount of biomass available on a continuous basis, right? Right. Then, then because hydrogen right. production and storage is a big challenge. Production can be done. How will you store that yeah. large amount of hydrogen? It is a challenge. So carbon composite materials yeah. are for that, right? So and yeah. otherwise you transport it through pipeline, but that is also still at right uh, infant level. So now only thing which can be done is that you have the <coughs> sorry hydrogen dispenser. Yeah. And then you put it in the cylinder yeah. and then send it right. Maybe just slightly at atmospheric conditions so or slightly higher than atmosphere. So when yeah. you talk about biomass to hydrogen. I will prefer a larger capacity. But when you talk right. about biomass to pyrolysis, it can be done on yeah. a mobile pyrolyzer. The mobile. advantage of a mobile pyrolyzer, you can have one ton to five ton. And this yeah. can be done in a remote area. And that yeah. bio oil can be transported through any can or lorry, right? Because that is easy to transport. Right. So that right. is where you need to understand that how the yeah. LCA and how the sustainability can be taken care. So this right. is, uh, I think, still a lot of debates are to be done whether pyrolyze it or gasify it. Okay. Great, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, any any mo more, qu uh, any further questions? We are open for the questions from the audience. Yeah. yeah. There are several uh, chat messages, sir, and everybody uh, appreciates, everybody is uh, mentioning a very yeah. impressive and useful presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are no much questions, but one question but, in the yeah, audience. One question is there from Dr. Prakash Halami. I could read. Uh, so everybody is appreciating your insightful talk, Prasapan. Thank Thanks. you. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Halami also says so, but he is interested to know how much cost of production of biofuel from biomass through fermentation approach. Fermentation, I think, Professor Kare, you can answer, or Professor Talada, you can answer. See, uh -huh. the fermentation, the cost wise, it is economical, no doubt, right? That's why the IOCL has set up a plant on based on rice as to ethanol by Lanja Tech technology with the right. Uh, and the reason is that because fermentation, when the enzymes are properly developed and economical, the temperature requirement is very low. Only thing that control becomes very, very important because the and in that way, I think uh, the fermentation roots are definitely, but the productivity is low. Right, uh, because the kinetics of this fermentation or enzymatic reaction is slow compared to thermochemical reaction, where you can have the large productivity. And once the process is developed, the cost wise, when you talk in total, right, because productivity is high, then it becomes economical also. And that's why many industries they prefer these kind of, right, because everybody wants large amount of product in small time, right? Fermentation. You know that just an example when you talk hydraulic retention time in the biogas conversion, right? You have algae or any kind of biomass kitchen waste. You can put it right just like a gober gas you in the car dump and then put some gober, right? You will have the biogas. That will take three to five days, right? And even that I'm talking quite optimistic, right? Because it will depend on the local temperature and several other things. Otherwise, it takes 20 days. But if you have the thermochemical, in a second, you will have the product. That is the advantage. And once this setup, refined is set up, but with an investment cost of the order of 500 to 1500 crores, that is the kind of investment you require when you are looking thermochemical. But in the case of fermentation, the investment would be less at that uh, when you talk about the local level. That is the only difference. So fermentation process, the control is much more complicated. And uh, the important thing in the fermentation process is that you have to work, wait for the time. The kinetics of this process is very slow. This is what I will interest Professor Khare, Professor Talada, they can answer better. No, that is fine, sir. And uh, I think as a customary and the BRSI um, huh. uh, Global Lecture Series... Raised... Yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, I, uh, Professor Pant, you have rightly addressed his uh, con uh, question. Fermentation technology have yet to reach to a level where they can be adopted by the industry in a viable manner. 
what you have highlighted today is actually for all of us that how the thermochemical pro catalytic process can be actually useful in in addressing the challenges being faced uh, globally uh, as regard to you know green technology and use of biomass for sustainable development and development of fuels and uh, platform chemicals so uh, and energy also so i think uh, it was very enlightening uh, if there is any further question i think dr dhruv has raised hand uh, dr dhruv you can ask the question uh, sir first of all great, great lecture sir uh, I the very informative lecture uh, that I attended. My only question is for the uh, bioremediation uh, technologies that you have suggested uh, 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 and all these things, they have excellent uh, ability for product recovery and all. Uh, why is, uh, what is the limitation that prevents the industrial uh, for its uh, real-time industrial uh, scale applications? The techniques that have been, uh, they haven't been used to uh, used in industrial uh, level to which they should be used. Uh, yeah, why, yeah. Why is that, that's a uh... I think a very pertinent question when you talk about platform chemicals from biomass. The limitation which I told you in the beginning also, right, because the collection and segregation of the biomass, when I talk about, right, this kind of biomass availability in the, and where the platform chemical, when you talk about a kind of concept of biorefinery, they are talking, right, in the, of the order of 500 tons per day, 2000 tons per day, right? And if you go back, because your uh, right, the, if I just give an example, how much HMF can be produced in terms of yield from right to one kg of the biomass? This will be of the order of gram, right? So that is where you have to understood that because th these are very a kind of platform and precious chemicals, right? So one kg is giving you say hundred gram of the product. So nine hundred gram is, is still to be utilized effectively, right? So that is where the challenge, the segregation of this, and then. How to, because the catalyst development, because still these are at TRL level 3 to 5 when I talk about platform. But ethyl levonate, levonic acid, because these are green chemicals. These are already being practiced. Many, right, HPCL, they have started their biorefinery. And Reliance is also working on this algae-based biorefinery. So some groups are working, but it has not come to that level. I, I am sure that when the policies will be made thoroughly, right, when these kind of fossil-derived fuel additives will be stopped, then definitely one has to work for this. So presently, fossil derived feed stocks, the similar platform chemicals are available at a cheaper rate, economical rate. And so far, there is no ban. But ethyl levonate already being produced. It is being blended also. HMF is being produced, being blended. But gradually, we need to move to the next level. Yeah. So thank you. I think, uh, Dr. Dhruv, your question also get answered. You have put in the chat panel, which is uh, he already answered. I see another question from Mr. Subi Joan. Uh, I think uh, I can slightly modify your question. You want to know the production of nanocellulose from water hyacinth. I think we are talking on different things here, not the nanocellulose, but can water hyacinth be used as a biomass for production of these uh, important industrial products uh, and bioenergy? Uh, that Professor Pant may like to answer. If, yes, if several answer. groups are working on this water hyacinth also. In fact, yeah. Professor Anushri Malik from mm. CRDT, she mm. has also done some work on the hydrothermal liquefaction. And mm. the groups are working, but this has not been taken to the next level at present. Okay, great. Uh, it is yeah. just, uh, right, I don't know, there are a couple of, right, uh, the composition stress or some problems are there where these issues are coming with it. But otherwise, people are working on this, but at R&D level. Yeah, so... So I think uh, maybe if uh, there is no further question, I don't see. So I have one question which uh, Dr. Pandey and myself want to ask you. Would you like to, and you know, motivate the audience about your journey to this great journey, starting from uh, assistant professor to the director and head of the one of the biggest national institutions of the country? Would you like to motivate our young audience? audience about uh, the career in the research and the way you have actually dealt with those. Uh... Yeah, I always tell uh, right, my students also because the credit goes to my students. I had always a big group of students and I learned many things from my students because when we do research, it's a part of learning. So, right. And uh, sometimes, right, uh, the students feel stress also because they may not get the right output at a proper time. And uh, that I always tell when you do the PhD, especially for PhD researchers, 
it is phd means patience hard work and devotion right you need to right devote the time output will automatically come you have to have patience because sometimes result your paper may re get rejected sometimes you are doing experiment light right uh, you say light chali gayi kya hoga so but these are the part of life right so life is always goes up with ups and downs and uh, uh, if you feel right uh, that uh, trust uh, is very important ethics is very important keep on doing hard work right uh, people uh, say that ki kya fayda hoga hard work but i think the hard work always pay unfortunately jo yahan par hamara kulgi tha usme bhi ek word aata hai shramam bina ta kimat shramam bina na kimapi sadhyam vrat agar aap hard work nahi karenge to kuch nahi milega तो ये यंग जनरेशन के लिए बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि हम लोग आजकल बहुत शॉर्ट टर्म में रिजल्ट चाहते हैं तो कई बार वो होता है मिल जाते हैं लेकिन बहुत बार होगा कि जब आप शॉर्ट रूट लेंगे तो हो सकता है कि वो सही रास्ता ना हो तो मेरा ये सजेशन है डू योर रिसर्च विद एथिक्स राइट हैव ट्रस्ट इन योर राइट फैकल्टी सुपरवाइजर मीट एंड डिस्कस विद योर कलीग्स बिकॉज आई ऑलवेज टेल माई स्टूडेंट इफ यू नो द मैथड हाउ टू मेक अदर्स है right you will be feeling happy and that is where the holistic development is required right uh, i think that 5 years 5 and 1/2 years of your phd time is very very crucial so hard work always pay ethics is very important and give sufficient time because it is best on all those uh, right to for your other cultural activities extra curricular meet with the people talk to them share your whatever the knowledge right and share your experiences with them and definitely i think learning through experience is very important and when you talk with the others you learn many things and this is what i feel uh, right uh, and whatever i am here with my uh, right all the uh, professor khare and all right talada asok pande right they were right always uh, right we had a lot of discussion professor khare and professor baskar we had lot of right joint research also so i think my all i am thankful to everyone who were there at delhi right who supported me at every step and uh, right uh, and because of that whatever i have done i am here today thank you very much oh very motivating uh, successful career uh, you know um, prospects and i think uh, it's a good sermon for the students you have rightly narrated phd <laughs> i think this nobody will forget the uh, phd ex can be expanded in such a manner <laughs> uh, thank you very much for this and i now request uh, Dr. Bhaskar, to propose a vote of thanks to the. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. And uh, at the outset, I thank uh, Professor Pant for accepting the global lecture series uh, as a first presentation in this 2024. I'm thankful on behalf of myself and also the BRSA fraternity, and also I thank all the uh, fellow colleagues and the BRSA fellows. and the committee members and also the attendees participants from the different parts of the country through youtube as well as through the uh, zoom platform and i once again thank professor pansar for giving your time and presentation thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you thank i'm you. really grateful to all of you that you have given me the opportunity to be in front of all the august gathering and thank you very much please visit our thank campus you. also thank you, sir. thank you very much thank you very much Is this the say, global lecture series for today's is close? Thank you very much.